hey guys a very good afternoon good evening so uh today what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss about uh the vmware a uh, vm migration to azure using commvault so what we are going to do is we are going to migrate a vm uh the vmware vm to the azure we are going to take a backup of the vmware vm and we are going to restore that particular vm to the azure we'll see what all options we'll get it uh we'll discuss the process in brief uh, that what all process that commvault follow what all information you require to put up uh when you are performing the restoration to the azure and we are going to discuss the scenario like what are the prerequisite and all that so uh let me uh tell you what lab scenario that we have as if now so guys uh on prem like uh let's suppose this is my on prem environment and on prem environment what i have is currently in my lab environment i have a esx host available now on this esx host i have a vm and what i have done is i have placed a media agent over here and this media agent have the access to one of the cloud storage that i have so i have a azure cloud uh, subscription with me so i have on the azure cloud i have purchased a subscription so on that one what i have done is i have a cloud storage uh i have a, uh, a storage account that has been created on that storage account i have created the container and on that particular container has been configured as a cloud library so uh this media agent have this storage account configured as the cloud library so i have a cloud library configured on this media agent which is pointing to the cloud storage that i have in the azure cloud now what we have done is we have backed up this particular vm through this media agent and we have sent the backup to this particular azure cloud so now the vm backup is lying on this particular azure cloud uh in your environment the connectivity that you have between the azure cloud and your on prem environment it can be like the uh, the connection that you required between the media agent and your cloud storage it might be on the https like over the internet or might be you are using a, a site to site vpn uh, or you are using something called express route to connect your on prem environment to the cloud whatever it is whatever the uh, way it is possible now the com serve and there is one media agent that i have placed inside the azure cloud and i have a media agent like this server is also acting as a media agent for me uh now this media agent also has has the access to the same cloud library uh, uh that we have configured so we have just uh, shared that particular cloud library which was uh, configured on the media agent 1 has been shared to the media agent 2 which is on the cloud so media agent 2 also will be able to read the data from that library now what we are going to do is in this scenario the vm which has been backed up on this particular cloud storage or the cloud library we are going to restore that particular vm okay we are going to perform the restoration of that particular vm in the azure cloud in one of the region okay one of the azure region now uh, guys remember that there is a lot of things that we have already discussed in the different videos we have uh, discussed how to configure the backup for the vmware uh, uh, esx host how to take a backup how to perform the restoration of the vms on premise even in separate video dedicated video we have configure we have seen how to configure the cloud library we have even seen that how to add the azure resource manager as a pseudo client okay in your com sub console so all those things we have already discussed in the other video now what we are going to do is in this video we will uh, we have already taken a backup of the azure uh, sorry the vmware vm to the cloud so what we are going to do is we are going to perform the restoration of that vm inside the azure cloud now to show you that thing this is my com serve that i have guys so this com serve as i have told already told you this com serve is actually in the cloud and this is acting as a media agent as well now if i go to the storage resources i have a cloud library lying over there this cloud library on which the vm backup is lying so if i go to the client computer let me minimize this one if i go to the client computer i have 
a pseudo client for my ESX that is with the name VMware vCenter. So if I expand this one and if I go to the sub client, I will be able to see that this sub client has been backed up using the storage policy one. So now what I'm going to do is I will right click on this sub client and check the backup history. So I will just go to the backup history. I will just click on OK and you can see there will be one job that we have already backed up in past. So we'll just wait for the job history to come up for this particular sub client. It's still loading, taking a little time. Yes. So you can see the job has come. Now, this has been backed up using the storage policy one. Now, let me go to the policies and let me show you that this particular storage policy one have only one copy, which is writing down to the cloud library. So that means this backup has been written to the cloud library. So let me browse this particular backup. Now, even before that, even before we can browse, guys, there is a pseudo client that I have already added for the Azure client. Okay, this is my Azure client that I have already added in your moment. So if you want to perform a restoration to the cloud, this particular pseudo client should be added. I will put a link for the old video in which I have just shown how to configure this particular Azure pseudo client. Uh, you can refer that particular link, but uh, this pseudo client should be configured in advance. Now, one more thing that I want to add over here, coming back to this one, this media agent is also acting as a VSA proxy. And this media agent was also acting as a VSA proxy, which is required in order to take the backup of these particular VM, or even it is required to perform the restoration of these particular VM. Now, I will just right click on this job ID and say browse and restore. Now in the browse and restore guys, there are the multiple options that you are getting. We have already discussed all these options in the old video for the VMware and even for the Azure VM backup, <coughs> sorry, uh, for the Azure VM backup and restoration. Now in this full virtual machine restoration, restore as guys, you have to select this as your resource manager and this tab this tab where you can select the Azure resource manager if you're restoring the VM to the Azure or to any other cloud window. Remember that this option will be coming up or this drop down will be enabled only and only, only and only when you have already added the Azure pseudo client. Okay. When you have already added the Azure pseudo client, then only uh, uh, what you can say, uh, it will be, uh, this option will appear for you. So in this one, I will select Azure resource manager, repeating again, once you have added the Azure pseudo client and under the client computer list, then only this drop down menu will be enabled for you. So if you want to do a cross hypervisor restoration, you will be able to see all the type of hypervisor that has been configured as a client in your environment. So select that hypervisor. Uh, to which you want to uh, restore. So I just want to restore to the Azure. So I select Azure resource manager and just click on view content. This is a VM that I have backed up from the on-premise from the cloud with the name VM Win SQL. Let me select this VM. I want to restore this VM to the Azure. Now, before even I can initiate the restoration, let me even take you to my cloud environment. In the cloud environment, like uh, uh, guys, uh, on my I'm on the Azure portal. And on the Azure portal, I have only one VM as if now with the name Comsol. That's the only VM that I have, which is running in the central uh, India. So once I restore this particular uh, VM, I should be able to see one more VM coming up over here with the name, whatever the name you decided. So coming back over here, let me say recover all selected. Now, once you click on recover all selected, a restoration wizard will come up in this one restoration VM. It is the Azure client to which I want to restore. You can select the VSA proxy. You can select uh, this particular VSA proxy as a target for the restoration. So select the VSA proxy. So you will, you will select the pro VSA proxy, which is nearest to this particular uh, uh, VM location where the VM backup has been taken. So this is a cloud library. This VSA will be nearest to it as comparison to the VSA that I have on the on-premise. So I will select VSA, which is in the cloud. You might not require, it's not mandatory to have a VSA in the cloud, but as per the best practices you should have, because otherwise this VM backup will be restored using this VSA on-premise and your restoration time will be a lot of, uh, uh, like a lot larger, like restoration will be go to there, then uh, to the, uh, uh, on coming back to the on-premise and all that. So avoid that kind of situation. We can have a VSA within the cloud. Now select a VSA, <coughs> which is in the cloud, click on next. Now over here, guys, 
this is a vm and this is a vm dk which is associated with this particular vm this is the vm over here change the vm display name select the vm name that you want to provide to this particular uh, vm after the restoration in the cloud this is a name that i want to uh, provide to this vm select the resource group in which this vm will be deployed so these are the resource group which i have created on my azure uh, so you can see all the uh, if i go to the azure portal in the azure portal if i go to my uh, resource groups so in that resource group you can see all that resource group are coming up over here so over here i will just select one of the resource group convolt test let's suppose now in this reason and storage account guys you have to mention one storage account where this particular vm will be cached for the restoration like this vmdk will be converted to the dot vsd that for the conversion that it's kind of a staging uh, uh, account that you require in between so you have to define the storage account where that staging will be done so you click on browse select any reason that you have let's suppose i select central india and this is a storage account that i have in the central uh, india on the azure so i will select this one now in this one there is an option coming up with the name configure guys click on this one and see that what all things that you can cover reason if you want to change this particular vm you want to restore it to some specific reason select that reason select the storage account in that particular reason where it will be staged then the resource group that you have selected earlier on you can change it over here now guys this tab of vm size it's quite important so in this vm size it is saying auto select that means whatever the number of cpu cores and rams that you have on this particular vm that you are trying to restore same number of vms will be what you can same number of uh, resources will be aligned to this particular vm and if you have some uh, configuration which sizes uh, that that specific size is not available in the azure for example you have some cpu cores some a uh, different number like uh, let's suppose seven cpu cores and uh, let's suppose something a uh, different ram uh, like 22 gb of ram just example okay 20 uh, 22 gb of ram that size of vm is not available in the azure so convert what it does it it will select the nearest vm size which is provided by the azure right now in the auto select if i say uh, guys i will not get uh, sorry uh, i i am getting all the sizes of the vms that comvault provide uh, that uh, azure provide so you can select any specific size to which you want to uh, 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 you know allocate to this particular vm but by default it will uh, uh, it will be having auto select auto select means it will have the nearest uh, what you can say, uh, you can select the nearest uh, matching size. The Commvault will pick up the nearest matching size from as comparison to the existing VM. After that, operating system that you want, that also I will keep it to auto select. So if my uh, VM, the source VM that I'm trying to restore, it's the Azure, uh, sorry, it's on the Windows, so it will be restored on the Windows. If it's a Linux, it will be restored on the Linux as well. Now, if you want to restore it as a managed VM, that option is also available. So what are the managed VM? That is something different. This is something related to the Azure. Uh, I don't want to have it as a managed VM as if now. After the restoration, do you want to uh, uh, attach a public IP to this particular VM? If yes, then you can say correct, uh, create public IP. If not, just remove this tab. After that, in which particular virtual network this particular vm will be deployed that you need to select over here so in this reason that you have selected if you have any uh, virtual network created on the azure level all of them will be visible so if i click on the browse uh, in the central reason in this central india reason i have two uh, network virtual network available you can select any one so let me say convolt test vnet and this is a subnet inside it so you can select the specific subnet as well in which you want to deploy this particular vm select that particular uh, uh, what you can say the subnet and the virtual network once you have selected that you can even select the NSG network security group so click on browse if there is any NSG configured in that environment in that reason you will be able to see that particular NSG coming up so let me select this NSG which is available for the central India 
and that's it guys just click on okay these are the configuration settings that you need to define after that you can click on next do you want to power on the vm after the restoration if yes you can select this tab or if there is a vm which already exists with this name do you want to override that one if you want that thing you select this option after that you can click on next now click on immediate now once you click on immediate I want to initiate that restoration as of now just click on finish now once you click on finish guys you will see one restoration job coming up over here with the name job ID 4384 now guys that restoration was actually happening inside this particular storage account that I have so if I go to the container guys there is the container that has been created with the name VHDS and in this one over here your VSD file will be temporarily created before it like when it converts from the VMDK to VSD it is actually cached over here inside the storage account that you have selected while performing the restoration so once the restoration start uh, it's still running it has not uh, actually started for the virtual machine so you can check the status it has not just start, yet started so once it will start over there you will see that VSD uh, uh, coming up over here you can see that VSD coming up okay so this restoration will going on will take a little time to perform the restoration once the restoration get complete so if you go to the virtual machine over here you should able to see more uh, that VM SQL restore virtual machine coming up so we'll wait for the restoration to get complete and then we'll see so guys you can see that uh, restoration has reached to 32 percent uh, we'll just wait for this restoration to get complete till now uh, the VM has not come up uh, over here in the list so let's wait for this restoration to get complete so guys uh, restoration job is almost 86 percent completed okay uh, I can still see the status is in progress but if you will go to the Azure portal you can see that VM when SQL restore that VM is coming up the status for that VM is creating and you can see according to the auto size what it has picked up it has picked up standard underscore a1 because uh, size was actually equivalent to the a1 only this vm was very small like one cpu code to gb ram something what originally so that nearest size of the azure offering the azure vm size from there the nearest vm size has been picked up still under the creating the status is under the creating now it's running that means the restoration is done from the combo perspective might be just some housekeeping task going on in the end but you can see that vm coming up the status has been changed to the running now if i select this vm i can see the detail of all this particular vm and what what particular virtual network and subnet it has been assigned to what size has been picked up what is the operating system for it and you can even you can see that we haven't selected the option of public ip address to be enabled and you can see the public ip address has not been assigned to this specific vm you can see what is a private ip that has been picked up from this particular subnet that is 10.0.0.7 you can see the size vcpu ram os disk that has been their size and all that all the features that has been assigned to this particular vm can be verified so it will be allowed to get restore from there uh, get a uh, complete restoration the job will get complete but you can still see the vm has been almost been completed restored uh, restored completely it's running and fine so guys this is how we perform the restoration or i would say the migration of the azure uh, uh, of the vmware vm to the azure okay how to perform the migration or you can say the cross hypervisor restoration how you can perform what all options you will be getting up so that's it guys uh, that's it from uh, today's session this is how you can perform the cross uh, 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 what you can say hypervisor restoration using the com vault you can use the com vault for the migration as well thank you so much guys